Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade functional equation. I'll tell you a little bit about the process, how I came up with this problem, but we have two times f of x minus f of x plus seven, the quantity divided by the quantity to x minus one, and it's equal to x. And we're gonna be solving for what? What do you think? Well, we can solve for f of three, we can also solve for other things, but let's go ahead and solve for f of three. Now, another question that we're gonna talk about is, I'll tell you a little bit later, okay? If I don't forget. So to be able to solve for f of three from this functional equation, what do you think we should do? Replace x with three, that would probably be the best thing we can do, right? If you replace x with three though, uh, there are consequences. We're gonna be getting another point or value. So it's gonna look like this, two times f of three, minus, if you replace x with 3 here and here, you're going to get 3, 3 plus 7 divided by, let me write it down, 3 plus 7 divided by 2 times 3 minus 1, and on the right hand side, you're going to have 3 because we have x, because x is 3. Make sense? Great. Now, if you simplify inside the parentheses, you get 3 plus 7, which is 10, and then 2 times 3, which is 6 minus 1 equals 5. So it's like 10 divided by 5, which is two, great. So from here, we get two, which means it's followed, f of three is followed by f of two, and the result is three. Great, well, not so great, because we need to find f of three, but what are we gonna do with f of two? We kinda need to get rid of that, right? So what can we do? This is the only equation we have, so let's go ahead and replace x with two now. This is what I mean by how I came up with this problem, the setup, just works nicely, you'll see. Now when you replace x with two, on the uh, left-hand side, first you get two times f of two, minus f of, now instead of three, you're gonna replace x with two, it's gonna be like two plus seven divided by two times two minus one. And that's equal to two, of course, because that's x. Now two plus seven is nine, this is a four, four minus one is equal to three, nine divided by three is equal to three, how nice. We got another equation, and guess what? There's only two unknowns. Let me go ahead and write these two together so you can have a better look. We have two times f of three minus f of two equals three, and two times f of two minus f of three is equal to two. So what else could you solve for? You could also solve, solve for f of two. But I wouldn't tell you that before we got to this point, obviously, right? How do you solve for f of three? Well, you can use substitution, or elimination. I can show you both. Let's start with elimination because I think elimination is fun. Actually, never mind. I changed my mind. I'm going to start with substitution. So to substitute, since we're looking for f of 3, let's think about it, right? That's the question. To find f of 3, I need to get rid of f of 2, but in a substitution way, not in an elimination way, right? So to do that, I kind of need to write everything in terms of f of 3. I should not have any other variables. So why don't we just isolate f of 2 from one of these equations. For example, second one, 2f of 2 is equal to 2 plus f of 3, divide both sides by 2, and you now got f of 2 in terms of f of 3, which you can substitute here. Awesome. Let's go ahead and plug it into the first equation, minus f of 2, which is 2 plus f of 3, divide by 2, that replaces f of 2, is equal to 3. Awesome. Now, we do need to solve for f of 3, and that's the only thing that's unknown. If you want to call it something else, like, I don't know, x maybe, not x, as probably a t or u or whatever you choose. doesn't matter. I'm not going to do that. So make a common denominator, and don't forget to negate and cross multiply. You'll get that. Now, 4f3 minus f3 is going to be 3f of 3 minus 2 equals 6. Add 2 to both sides. You're going to get 3f3 equals 8. Divide both sides by 3, finally, and you get f of 3 equals 8 thirds. So that's the value of uh, the function at x equals 3, and that's what we were looking for. So we got the answer. Yay. We could also find f of 2 similarly, but let's go ahead and before we get into some other stuff, uh, let's go ahead and see how we can use the elimination method because I think that's going to be fun as well. And you're going to get to decide which method you like better. But I'm going to proceed with this and 
we're going to get this. Notice that uh, when I said uh, I kind of came up with this problem, the idea of the setup is such that this gives us a nice equation. Otherwise, let's say from the second equation, you got f of 4. You would have three unknowns. You couldn't solve for it, right? That would be the problem. And then you can come up with another equation, maybe. And again, that's something else we're going to talk about. So elimination works like this. Since we are looking for f of 3, we can go ahead and eliminate f of 2 to do that. I'm going to need to multiply the top equation by 2 everywhere. And that's going to give me 4f of 3 minus 2f of 2 equals 6. Now I'm going to consider these two equations. If you go ahead and add them up, 2f2 minus 2f2 is 0. That's going to cancel out. 3f of 3 equals 8. And we're going to get the result more directly. I think elimination is a better choice here in Melpin, but I could be wrong. Again, let me know which method you like better. Is there another way to do it? I don't think so. But like similarly, we could find f of 2, right? So let's go ahead and talk about the setup of this problem. Let me show you how... Actually, there is no x. It was the initial plan, but then I kind of gave up on that. Because you, you don't need that x. It's just an extra. So here's how I thought about this problem. I want uh, two f values, such as... 2f of something, and I want that to be x for sure. And the other one, I want it to be a rational function like this. And on the right-hand side, I can have x because that'll keep it simple, right? See? So I thought about it. And then here's what I want. I want to replace x with 2. It should give me 2 here. And here, it should give me a 3. But at the same time, when I replace x with 3, they should give me a 2. Make sense? So in other words, if you call this a function, g, g of x, I want g of 2 to be 3, and I want g of 3 to be 2, so that my method works nicely. You get the idea? Now, here's my uh, other plan. I've been thinking about, when working on, a problem with 3f values. So you have something like 2f of something, and then minus f of something, and f of something else. But I want it in such a way that these three values are just going to rotate. And I have to tell you, it was pretty complicated. It was very time consuming. But eventually, I ended up finding something nice. And I'm probably going to do a video maybe next week. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. So I'll be on the road for a while. That's why I'm kind of recording four videos today. This is the first one. <laughs> Anyways, so if you're wondering where I'm going, uh, I'm traveling to Missouri, St. Louis. If you're from St. Louis, say hi. Great, so let's go ahead and see how we can think about another scenario like this one, maybe. And you may not be able to start with f of x because that would be kind of probably um, inconclusive if you do that. But you can think of something like this, maybe a function of this form and a quadratic maybe, right? If you can think of something that would work like this, please let me know. And then f of maybe a rational function. And of course, uh, you have the freedom uh, of, you know, choosing the same numbers. Like you can repeat the a, you can repeat the c or whatever. So to reduce the number of variables. But the whole idea is, can I find this type of setup such that, let's say when I replace x with 1, this gives me 1, this gives me 2, this gives me 3. And then when I replace x with 2, this gives me three, this gives me one, so on and so forth. You get the idea? So that I can solve for all the variables, which would be f of one, f of two, f of three. I have to tell you, that proved to be quite complicated, but I ended up finding something. I hope that works. Uh, and again, we're gonna talk about that later, okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.